The Cube at OpenStack Summit Atlanta 2014 is brought to you by Brocade. Say goodbye to the status quo and hello to Brocade. And Red Hat. Here are your hosts, John Furrier and Stu Miniman. Okay, welcome back everyone, live in Atlanta. This is the OpenStack Summit. This is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined with my co-host, Stu Miniman, and on us at wikibon.org. And our next guest is Angel Diaz, Vice President of Open Technology and Cloud Performance. Welcome to theCUBE. Hey, thank you very much for having me. I mean, IBM is no stranger to open source. I mean, you go back over the years, you look right. at the contributions you've done across the board, up and down, it's just been fantastic. Developer works well well-followed um, community, certainly the contribution there on the site is fantastic. We've been following you guys for years, so congratulations. Um, but OpenStack now is leveling the playing field. We've heard quotes like, it's going to decimate the value chains in the enterprise, remake IT, enable developers. What's your take of OpenStack right now? I mean, open cloud has been a concept that's been put out there. People are gravitating towards it. The attendance, obviously, people are voting with their feet. Sessions are packed. Um, there's demand. Yeah. What does it mean right now around OpenStack and open cloud and around open source in particular? Well, you know, I think, <laughs> interesting intro, you know, you could take a uh, glass half full or a glass half empty approach. <laughs> Decimate your, or opportunity. You're defined by how you answer but, the question, yeah, don't but, worry. But let, but let me tell you, I mean, look, I remember back in 2011 or so uh, when basically OpenStack was mostly Rackspace. Uh, and, and by the way, hats off to the Rackspace guys who said, look, we wanted to take the OpenStack way. It was one of, uh, one of several uh, open source uh, infrastructure as a service communities growing out there. Uh, and say, look, what can we do to explode the ecosystem? I, I remember being in the room with, with, with uh, Jonathan and the team and say, look, how about we create a foundation together? Uh, IBM was one of the original uh, eight founders of the OpenStack Foundation. And we thought what we really needed to do is just empower the people who are doing OpenStack so they can do more and create more of a community. Because there's nothing really we need to change. We just need to take the OpenStack way and explode it out. That was back in 2011, 2012-ish. Here we are now, right, 2014. And I would say, hands down, OpenStack is the ubiquitous infrastructure as a service platform of choice. Uh, in the open source kind of world. And what that has done is that has opened opportunities. If you look at all of our clients in IBM, all of the, all of the folks here who are using uh, you know, OpenStack, you, you, you see a freedom of innovation. They no longer have to worry about, look, am I building a dead end cloud? Can I build a cloud that can span elastic across on-premise, off-premise, and deal with hybrid situations? By adhering to OpenStack, by adhering to you know, what we're doing around uh, the network, the compute, and the storage, and the APIs, you're able to build an infrastructure that can essentially burst in any direction you want. Now that's just the beginning, but that's where we've been and how we've gotten here. It's almost like uh, in the spirit of the NHL playoffs, the original six, there's four of the original six, there's Bruins and Canadians are in there, Blackhawks <laughs> and the Rangers. <laughs> so the original eight, you guys were there from the beginning, but there was, wasn't a lot of fanfare, this original eight and the original Rackspace had a lot of, it pushed a lot of it because you know, they were building their own cloud out. So they saw the DevOps movement, certainly it was on your radar screen, obviously IBM's a big, you know, the aircraft carrier of IBM, which is now all behind open now, after going to Impact, or Pulse and Impact. Clearly, the company's rallying behind this. So, so what was going on at IBM at the time? So, also you had your hands in it, but what's happened at IBM since that time and right. now? No, well, you know, so what we thought was we looked back at what we did in the early '90s, okay, with with the web. In fact, uh, I, I myself worked on some of the original XML, HTML standards and protocols back when I was at IBM Research in the early '90s, right? And back then, it was about creating markets, making it easier for people to use technology and feeling comfortable in adopting technology. And I think we all, we of the industry, ended up in a better place because of it. That's what we're trying to do in cloud. So what we're thinking about is a open cloud architecture, whether you look at the hardware, the software-defined environments, the infrastructure layer, the platform layer, how you build applications, right? Uh, how you interact from a user experience in, right? When you build an application for a mobile device, should it be cross-device, how easy it is to create that. Just to have levels of interoperability at each one of those layers, but also uh, uh, vertically across that chain. 
what we're doing in OpenStack uh, and a lot of the work that we're doing around OpenStack and support of OpenStack is enabling that. Let me just give you a concrete. I don't want to get too nerdy here, but let me just give go. you a concrete. Well, it's okay, it's a cube. It's, it's, we can get right? nerdy here. Oh, yeah, right. we go okay. down the geek weeds, right, no problem. We're going there. So, so you know, imagine you have an application, you're developing an application in a polyglot way, using many different runtimes. And you want to say, look, I need to have a certain amount of, say, network bandwidth for this application because it's a high priority application. You want to be able to have an application developer specify that, okay? and then have that honored by the infrastructure in some type of policy, and then have that honored by a network infrastructure going through the neutron into a software-defined environment. How do you do that? That's kind of where we're starting to take all this stuff as an industry. If you do each one of these layers in an open way, you've got a hope and a prayer of doing that. Frankly, if you're a vendor, IBM or anyone else, and you're not building on these open uh, technologies across this architecture, you will be out-innovated by what's happening here at this conference and, and other conferences like it. And that's the way we view it, uh, and that's what we've been trying to do, uh, very systematically, if you look at what we're doing. I think one of the, the latest additions to, to you know, the rock band <laughs> that, that is something called Cloud Foundry, uh, which is a, a, a great community for doing polyglot platform as a service. A lot of the original members who, you know, Rackspace included, right, uh, who started uh, kind of this OpenStack movement are looking to do the same thing for platform and bringing these worlds together. That's really a very promising and growing community with the same kind of feel. Dedication to the user, input from the users, community, very positive way of interacting in a meritocracy. Uh, when we started contributing in OpenStack, IBM, you know, we started with zero contributors. Right? We, we, we started the foundation, we had, we had nothing. We had to build our reputation. You go from Essex back in 2011, 2012, so now with Icehouse, right, IBM has uh, hundreds of, of contributors, uh, you know, hundreds of over 500 or so developers working it. We're in the top three in code contributions. You know, we've earned our, our permission by adding value. And, and that's how strong communities grow. Um, do you know what the, what the number one contributor is, who the number one contributor to OpenStack is? It's the individual user. It's the individual contributor. It is not a vendor. And that is a sign of a healthy community. And I'm really As an aggregate, not one person. Yes, yeah, you know, like an aggregate. The individual, Mr. Individual out there, doing a good job. Yeah, yeah, C kind of like the other categories. <laughs> they right. catch all but the individuals, but it, it, so are those mostly users, or does that, that, that doesn't count like the, like the little startups they're, that they're, have? They're developers, but they're, in, you know, they're kind of folks who, don't, uh, who aren't in, say, a major company, or not, that don't count themselves as part of a major company. They're people who are contributing because they love it, and that's what they do. It's part of who they are. Look, as a developer, Right, you uh, you want to buff your resume, <laughs> right? How do you buff your resume? Well, you become a leader in a community, in an active community, right? There's nothing more important to to folks who are hiring now uh, today, being part of this ecosystem, this IT renaissance. I mean, you're out in the valley, you know it, you feel it, you, you feel the IT renaissance that, that that's occurring. Well, the bubbles. I'll just put it plainly because you know I can say I don't work at IBM, so I won't get fired for saying it. The bubble's bursting on the consumer side. We're not bubble. But it's froth is getting trimmed off the top. WhatsApp kind of you know, set that table there. Um, but the enterprise is hard business. I mean, it's not, it's good business if you can pull it off, but you know, see Box pull back from their IPO, you, no. can't, you can't manufacture momentum in the enterprise. So there are some real, real smart people working on developing for the enterprise, and cloud is that engine, right? So, mm -hmm. so they realize that you can't just, you know, head fake your way to success. So, you know, with that, what are you seeing for development in open? How does open source become industrial grade or enterprise grade. Yeah, so there is a consistent democratization of technology, okay? Uh, certainly since the advent of the internet and kind of when things became much more visible from a software perspective, uh, more and more innovation is happening in the open. Uh, so what you want to be able to do is inspire and bring and build skill around open technology. Then uh, what happens is you take that technology into the enterprise and you face use cases, you face realities uh, that perhaps you had not thought about in, in, in the open world that need to be dealt with, okay? That's where you know, companies come in and add value to open technology, to make it easier to deal with existing systems with a variety of different networking switches and devices or a whole bunch of storage areas or, or certain performance characteristics. And that's kind of how folks are, how a lot of the companies, small and large, are adding value. And all they're really doing is adding fuel to the fire because it is about speed, okay? In the case of OpenStack, it is about speed of how quickly 
can you uh, create your cloud, manage your cloud, manage a heterogeneity of clouds within your environment? Um, and, and, and that's kind of what's, what's going on here. So, so Angel, you know, IBM has you know, a huge history with open source. Mm. Uh, you know, a lot of the companies that we look at, it's a couple of questions is, are you committed to open source and are you, you know, actively contributing to the community? Uh, from, from an IBM standpoint, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, you know, it, so many announcements now, we're putting a billion dollars towards something. Uh, you know, I think back to the, the Linux billion dollars was really set the bar out there. Matter of fact, John said, you know, we really need 10 billion to be the new billion from all the money that's flowing into cloud these days. Um, if I, I look at OpenStack though, uh, one of the debates we've been having is do we need really some strong leaders to step forth or can the community help moderate it? There's the technical board and you know, the various boards that operate that. Um, d is IBM just there to make sure that the community does things and everything stays open or you know, what is IBM's leadership position uh, in, in the OpenStack community? All right, so two questions. Yeah. So let me just parse them in my head. One is Go around, ahead. do we need strong leaders in OpenStack? And then also, what is IBM's position or leadership in the community? So let me start with the first one. I think, uh, I think we've got some pretty good strong leadership with Jonathan and the team that we have uh, and the project leaders that have been elected by the community within OpenStack to guide us technically. Uh, we've been really fortunate from the beginning, and I think that system works. That's the OpenStack way. That's where it goes. Now, where we continue uh, to get more leadership from and will always strive to get more is on end users. You know, when you hear the, the, the folks stand up on stage this morning and talk about, you know, the Disneys and the Wells Fargo's and what are all these folks who stand up on stage here and talk about how they're using, that is where we want more leadership to come from, from the end users to get deeply ingrained in this technology and explain and educate the development community <coughs> what we need to do and, and, and educate Jonathan and the project leaders and so forth. Now, from a, a board perspective uh, and what we're doing there and in particular IBM, you know, we're involved here for several reasons. One, we are generally trying to accelerate the cloud market, right? We want the market to grow. And the faster the cloud market grows, the fast, faster we grow, the faster our clients do more. You do that by being open, by creating open technologies. Uh, we use OpenStack in our products. So we, whenever we need to improve something, because working with our clients, there are use cases and things they need to do, we do those in the open. Uh, there's lots of areas in OpenStack, whether you look at, at uh, you know, if you look at the compute fe features, about 50% of the compute features came from IBMers, stuff that we did with clients, right? Uh, so we will contribute back into the community, provide leadership, just because, you know, it results that our guys are doing so much work, they get elected into a position of leadership. Um, uh, and then we bring that back in, in, into, in, into our products. And that's, that's the degree how we see it. We're not looking to uh, take over or do anything. <laughs> you know, we're doing what we do. Right? Yeah, so, Angel, you talk about OpenStack getting into your products. Can, can you give us some specifics on, on that? Sure. You yeah, know, absolutely. Obviously, you've got the software acquisition and OpenStack right. can sit on top of that. Right. Uh, we actually dug in with uh, some of your folks uh, on theCUBE, I think, talking about right. how right. you know, SoftLayer didn't start as OpenStack being one of the major, deliver, major offerings there, but you know, now it, it, it's definitely uh, you know, sure. more along that line. So. Yeah, so, you know, uh, so we, uh, IBM provides uh, OpenStack technology in a variety of ways. Uh, you know, clients can start with an on-premise, uh, uh, what we call our, our Smart Cloud Foundation offering, which is uh, OpenStack-based. It allows them to deal with uh, setting up private clouds, uh, dealing with orchestrating across cloud environments, uh, uh, which is, I think, really, really important. We look at the, to do, the ability to do DevOps and the ability to do sustainable and repeatable private cloud implementations. We've got, of course, software, where you can stand up and put OpenStack on top of software. Uh, we also have uh, our integrated systems, which is our pure family, which uh, combines uh, software and hardware uh, optimized for certain kinds of workloads, which also has OpenStack inside. And then there is the combination of all of those, right? The ability to burst based on your needs. If you have an optimized workload, you can burst from your private cloud to a pure systems. Or if you need more capacity, it becomes easy to burst an image from uh, on-premise to our software and so forth. So that's kind of how we use uh, the OpenStack technology. We've got services and practitioners all around this, uh, helping our clients be, be successful. Uh, but it doesn't stop there, right? You know, the level of bursting that people think about is the virtual machine, 
or the image, right? But what about the workload on the image? Well, we're doing work in the heat project in this thing called Tosca, which defines a, an abstract notion of a, of a workload to allow you to have the application partitioned at, at a more uh, fine grain level or at the application layer uh, where we're doing some cool stuff uh, with Cloud Foundry to allow the application to be tiered in, in a natural kind of way. So, so that's kind of where we're headed and that's how we do use it today in our products. So I got to ask you about the, the, the trend on CrowdChat. The number one conversation with the most votes is got 108 votes. Uh, it's from... Uh, uh, it's not the NFL draft? <laughs> not, I'm, well, my question was where to watch the Brewers game tonight, but uh, uh, the question, OpenStack needs to make containers first class citizens. Any arguments against this? Very heated thread, a lot yeah. of comments. Obviously, at the Red Hat Summit, uh, containers were all the rage. Docker Docker's is getting great. a lot of traction yeah. right now. People are developing to Docker. Yeah. Um, we have an engagement container with the CrowdChat's our technology for the, for the engagement data. Containers are the rage, but they're not, nothing, nothing we haven't seen before. We've seen containers, we've seen wrappers, all kinds of uh, things to make things compatible. What is going on with containers in your mind, and are you happy with the development of that, and what, is there a role in OpenStack, and is it going to play well to what you guys are doing? Yeah, you know, uh, there's a couple of recipes that make a good community and a good ecosystem. One is technology. Perhaps equally important is community. Uh, and by the way, OpenStack had that even before the foundation, right? If you look at something like Docker, they have that. They got some good technology, and they've got a really strong uh, uh, ecosystem growing, just exponentially. Uh, if you look at recently, the, the Docker guys uh, had a uh, press release where they are talking about creating an advisory board and moving towards a truly open governance model. Not all open source projects are equal. Uh, you want to have a truly open model like the OpenStack way. Uh, so, in fact, uh, I think I even provided a quote to that press release saying this is a good thing. So, uh, so I think that containers are good. Uh, there are several ways of integrating containers, right? It's all in the eye of the beholder. Uh, it's what is you're exactly containing, right? And I think the community will sort that out. Uh, but, you know, at one level, you can imagine compute orchestrating containers just like it does an image. You could, you could imagine an isomorphism between a container and a, and a hot defined uh, template. Um, I think the community kind of sort out where that fits, uh, but I think it could fit in both places or in other places, and there's nothing uh, wrong with containers. So what's the answer? The answer is going to be where the users tell, tell us. <laughs> okay, so we'll see. we'll see. So I asked Pat Gelsinger, uh, CEO of VMware at uh, EMC World, what he thought of containers. He goes, oh, you know, containers have been around for a while, and he's a little bit more direct than you, where he said, VMs make a good container. Um, they do. So containers are well, so we'll see. So you basically so we'll what you're saying is Docker's got some legs, they got a community, healthy communities have alternatives. It, it all they depends. Have, they have conversations and yeah. propose things. It all depends on what you're trying to do. One of the beautiful things with containers is the utilization of CPU. I mean, you can, on, on a rack, you know, have all these things sitting on a single host operating system, right, getting great utilization on that particular uh, thing. That's kind of hard to do at the VM layer. So it really depends what you're trying to accomplish. So I asked the question because one of the things that in the middle of the thread was um, on, on this first class system question on containers is, direct quote, I would say it will take a push by IBM before Docker gets any closer to being a first class citizen on Cloud Foundry. So, I mean, I, you guys just swing a big stick when it comes to muscle. I mean, you have clients, we've been around 50 years celebrating the mainframe. Um, so you, you have clients, you see you guys will move fast on that. So I get that. The question I have for you is Cloud Foundry. What about Cloud Foundry that made that compelling for you guys? Can you mm. comment on that? Is there any, do you have any insight you can oh, share? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it was very similar to the feeling that we had when we kind of started to get to know the Rackspace guys, right? Uh, who were doing, uh, uh, you know, OpenStack early on. Uh, you know, great technology. You know, it is, it is uh, Cloud Foundry is lock and step with how application developers are, are building stuff uh, today, right? They are living in a polyglot world. In other words, they use the tool that fits what they're trying to build. They want to mix a Ruby, a J Java, whatever, to build their application. They want to have the right tool to do what they're trying to accomplish. Um, that is what's very attractive. And then you add to that a uh, growing and positive community. Well, those are the two aspects of what makes something special. So uh, uh, we, we got together with the Pivotal guys with uh, essentially the same cast of characters that help, for the most part, uh, kind of uh, create a, an OpenStack foundation, we announced that we're going to be working on a Cloud Foundry foundation. All right, let's talk about performance. So we had Ubuntu uh, founder on, Mark Shuttleworth, yeah. and you know, he's talking about performance labs. Tell us about what you guys look at, what makes good performance, how do you guys measure that? Talk about what you guys are doing. On performance? Yeah. Yeah, you know, the, uh, when you kind of go and you move to, to uh, you know, from a, 
small deployment to a, a real large scale deployment that needs to handle you know massive amounts of transaction, raise massive amounts of data, right? Uh, there are lots of things you need to start taking into account around the network, around say storage prior prioritization. Uh, we just announced today uh, something called uh, Elastic Storage, which allows you to use Swift, for example, or, or Cinder, and optimize the storage based on the workload, right? If it's really important, you put it on a flash. It's all you know, separated from the user. If it's something that you can, you, know, you need to have lots of information, but not that access, you put it on tape, right? Tape still exists all over the place, right? So, so that is the kind Wait, of Wait, tape was supposed to be dead a long time ago. No, that's dead. <laughs> <laughs> right? There's a lot of stuff going on. Uh, uh, and and, and bringing, bridging those worlds together and, and having the right storage for what you need uh, is, is real important. So, so, uh, so that is what we talk about when we talk about scale. It is allowing our, uh, our clients who are doing uh, massively uh, transactional, massively performance systems to be able to use OpenStack. And we tune all aspects of this architecture to allow that. Talk about for the CIOs out there that were evaluating OpenStack, what's, what's your advice to them? Give them an update on, what, from your perspective, where is, where is OpenStack at right now? Viable, crossing the chasm, getting ready to cross the chasm, uh, what's your take? Yeah, so I don't know, kind of, I think it was when we were talking, I was thinking about a, a picture, and I don't know, I, I think it's, uh, I don't know if it's good to be on the other side of the chasm, so it's certainly viable. Um, I think that, you know, if, uh, if you're new to OpenStack, uh, you're not alone. Uh, you know, the way to get started is to get engaged in the community, look at the user stories, and engage the community on how to get started. Uh, look at the vendors that have OpenStack offerings. IBM, we love your business, but guess what? There's a lot of others, and that's the beauty of what we're doing. It's not a single, you're not going to get locked in, right? You have a growing set of OpenStack skills. It's not like a vendor where you, you can only have one skill base to source from. Um, so look at what others have done. Uh, and get started, and, and clearly define uh, your use case. So talk about the, what's going on inside IBM. Mm. Give the folks a, a feel for the change uh, internally. And I know you guys have been doing open source for a while, we talked about that on the intro segment here. Um, but what's going on internally? What are you guys doing specifically? Uh, obviously the company's rallied behind it. I, you know, take that hill was a comment I saw in crowd chat. Management's aligned, messaging's tight. It's like when you walk into Nordstrom and you see everything on the rack, I want the mannequins dressed up beautifully, it hangs together. The story of IBM is hanging together pretty well. You go to Nordstrom? Yeah. I, I go to Gap. Yeah. So. <laughs> Gotta get dressed up, I'm you're just seeing talent and all. Um, <laughs> oh, actually, my wife goes there and takes oh, the kids. But, um, no, seriously, so you got a good story, hanging hanging together, but now internally, open is an opportunity. Mm. The more, more, more you share, the more powerful you become. That is the credo of, of this world. What are you guys changing internally? The middleware layer? Is it philosophy? New programs? What's going on? Yeah. So, uh, I, I get that question asked a lot. You know, the open source and open technology is inherent in the fabric of who we are as a company. Uh, look at most of IBM's software offerings. They have open source technology in it. Our web application servers, our data, everything has open source technology in it. We communicate, uh, we, we participate in, in actively across many, many different communities. So there isn't anything different uh, we are doing here, but I can tell you one thing we are doing is being very vocal in trying to get others to participate. So one of the things IB, HP has done um, in, the his, in their past has been SCO, Linux, Unix was around, if you remember those days, they identified their customers around Linux and SCO, there's a lawsuit pending. Yeah, Make a we've long done story that for years. So are you going to do what HP's doing now, indemnify your customers around some of the licensing issues around open source? We, HP we, just announced. Yeah, we, we, we've done that for years in our technology. This is not new business. So you have that? Yes. You indemnify your customers yes, with absolutely. cloud? Yeah, with our offerings, yes, absolutely. Yes. Okay, so, you, so they're matching you then? Pretty much. <laughs> okay, we'll hear from <laughs> that. Nothing new here. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing okay. new. I mean, look, this is how uh, we have been, if you go back to how we started Apache and what we've done around making sure that we use our portfolio, our intellectual property, to protect the open source community across from acts of aggression, right? That's what we do. Uh, we've been protecting uh, the open communities, we, we protect these open communities, that's how we do our stuff. Right, so, so Angel, you know, if, if, if we say, everybody's almost getting to table stakes on some of these. If it's, if it's open source uh, and we're contributing to all the different things, uh, you know, how do you differentiate in open source? Uh, I've heard from other IBM before, it's all about execution. Uh, for, from your standpoint, you know, how does you know, IBM differentiate its offering? Yeah. Well look, vision without execution is hallucination. So it is all about execution. But we just had a discussion on performance, right? Scale, 
Uh, we had a proportion uh, uh, about time to value. We talked about speed, right? These are the things, there's going to be a constant democratization of technology. These are the places where we, because of our experience, our years in the software business, kind of being number one middleware vendors to our clients, right? Uh, we are able to take the, that, those experiences and take OpenStack and make it fit in the context of what our clients are trying to do, okay? Uh, and, we're, and, and that's how we build our offerings with OpenStack inside to do that. Uh, and that's the value add, frankly, that, that our clients expect and appreciate. Uh, and, and, and so that's how we, uh, that's, our, that's our secret sauce. Angel, thanks for coming on theCUBE, really appreciate it. Thank you mentioned you. the old days. I remember John Patrick uh, and I <laughs> were friends, even though John rides his motorcycle around these days. But you know, back in the day, I, I mean, IBM looked at the web and said, hey, you know, we might have missed it. It was, it was viewed as a toy internally, initially. I remember back in the 90s, talking to some of the folks at IBM, they, ah, the web thing, it's just for kids playing in the basement, these web masses, what the hell they know. And look what that's turned into. Same with the cloud, certainly social media is the same way you guys are looking at social business as a big driver. So I want you to end the segment and share with the folks out there in your own words, why is this point in time so important in the industry? Uh, with all the confluence of the trends, you know, there's a lot, you know, is it overused to say we're at an inflection point, uh, disruption, all that stuff's going on. Explain in your own words, why here, at this point in time in this technology era, is it so awesome and so changing? Well, when you look at what our business folks are trying to do, right? Our clients are business folks. They're trying to use mobile, social, you talk about social, big data analytics, all this stuff to do more for their clients, to do better, to better compete. This is all greatness, but guess what? You know, doing analytics requires compute power. Increasing the internet of things requires compute power. If you don't have a successful, you know, elastic cloud infrastructure, all of those markets will fail. So I think uh, that to the degree that we as an industry are successful with cloud, in particular with an open cloud, all of these other very tightly knit adjacent technologies that frankly are going to improve our lives and improve what our business folks can do uh, will be successful or, or, or not a success. So if, if that's an inflection point, let's call it an inflection point. If it's not, it's really darn important. <laughs> it's something's going on, tectonic shifts, certainly accelerating the value. You guys uh, have a lot of muscle in the market, big player in the, in the business, and have a lot of investment going on in the area. So again, accelerating the greatness of the cloud will certainly accelerate the opportunities and the wealth creation. Uh, Everything's being disrupted. The money is on the table and the winners will take all in a lot of different segments. So um, I totally agree with you. Uh, cloud is certainly the engine of innovation. This is theCUBE. We're doing our part in sharing that innovation with you. We'll be right back with our next guest live in Atlanta for the OpenStack Summit. I'm John Furrier with Stu Miniman. We'll be right back. Thank you.